Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. I've got a really nice integral for you here today. Um, the answer will be expressed uh, in terms of an infinite sum, but it's kind of a cool infinite sum. Um, so I'm, I'm going to show it. Um, all right, what are we going to do with this? We've got the integral from 0 to infinity of x over e to the x squared plus e to the negative x squared, all squared with respect to x. That looks pretty nasty. All right, let's uh, let's make it a little bit better by making the following substitution. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's the substitution we're going to make. Now, I did not immediately arrive at that substitution. This came about as uh, the result of several... Uh, separate substitutions, but in the end, this is the one single substitution that you can use to get what we need. All right, so I performed the substitution. I replaced x with square root of 2 over 2 u to the 1 half, and I replaced dx with square root of 2 over 4 u to the negative 1 half. I just did it directly, and our bounds of integration did not change. All right. So next, uh, I did some simplification. You can see I brought out our constants, and um, I, I squared this term and this term, uh, which just gave us an e to the 1 half u plus e to the negative 1 half u. So nothing too crazy there. And then next, I did some more sub, uh, simplification. Now, this it might seem strange how I got that, but what I did was inside this... Um, Inside here, inside the parentheses right there, I multiply the top and the bottom by e to the negative one-half u. Um, now, you might be wondering why I multiplied by e to the negative one-half u and not e to the one-half u. Uh, that's just because, in general, uh, when you're going from zero to infinity, you like e to the negative exponent. You don't, let, you don't want to have an e to a positive exponent um, because then it, it tends to diverge that way. So that's the reason I did that. All right. And after doing that, I, I just simplified it. You know, I, I squared everything. Um, and this is what we get. And then I brought uh, u back to x. All right, so next um, we're going to use the Taylor series representation for 1 over 1 plus e to the x. And that's equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n times e to the negative nx. Uh, and that's good for uh, x between 0 and infinity. So if that's true, then we should be able to take a derivative with respect to x on both sides, and it should still be true. So yeah, we have uh, the derivative with respect to x of the left is equal to the derivative with respect to x of the right. In other words, this is true. And you'll notice that this is exactly represented, that's exactly part, that's part of our integral right there. So we can replace this e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative x squared with this sum right here. So when we do that, we get this. Well, th this was our original integral. And now you'll see that replacing this with this gives us this. All right. And then next, um, oh, and one, one more thing. You, you might notice here um, that in this sum, it's going from n is equal to 0 to infinity. But in this sum, for some reason, I switched it from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to infinity. And the reason for that is we don't need this n is equal to 0 term because it's 0 because of this n right here. So I just took it away. So our, our sum goes from uh, 1 to infinity. It's the same thing as going from 0 to infinity. All right. And next, uh, what I did is I manipulated this a little bit. I switched the uh, integration and summation notations there, and I put everything uh, with an x in it to the uh, right of the integration, and everything uh, without an x in it to the left of the integration, because uh, these ends are constant with respect to x. So going from here 
to here, no big deal. All right, but now, what are we gonna do with this? I mean, how are we gonna integrate this? What is, what, what is that? You, we know that that's gonna be something in terms of N, but what is it? All right, so to figure out what that's actually going to be, we're going to utilize Feynman integration or, or the Le uh, Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. So this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna have some function of T that's equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative tx dx, and that evaluates to one over t. I'm not gonna show that integration. That's, that's fairly trivial uh, for someone watching this channel. Okay, so now we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to obtain this. F prime of t is equal to negative integral zero, for, uh, integral zero to infinity of x times e to the negative tx dx, which is in turn equal to the derivative with respect to t of this part right here, which is negative one over t squared. All right, now let's take another derivative. F double prime is equal to that, which in turn is equal to this. F triple prime is equal to this, which in turn is equal to this. So now we can, we kind of, we can kind of see a pattern here. In general, if we take s derivatives of our function of t, we'll get this on the left-hand side. This negative 1 to the s uh, comes from the fact that we have alternating positive, negative, positive, and negative. And our first one, our 0th derivative, is, is a positive value, so that's why it's negative 1 to the s. And then you can see that we will also have x to the s. This s co corresponds to whatever derivative we're on, and you can see it matches up. On the third derivative, we have an x cubed. On the second derivative, we have an x squared. Um, and this is in turn equal to negative 1 to the s times s factorial. You can see that it is actually s factorial. This is 0 factorial, which is a 1, and then we have a, another 1, which is a 1 factorial. Then we have a 2, which is a 2 factorial. And then we have a um, 3 factorial. That corresponds to what derivative we're on. So whatever derivative we're on, we have an s factorial. And then we have 1 over t to the something. Well, that something is going to be s plus 1, because you can see whatever derivative we're on, in this case the third derivative, the power on, on t there is 1 more than that. So in general, we have this equality. All right, now this, this step is a little bit strange. Now, we know this is true for, um, you know, this pattern holds for um, non-negative um, integer values of s. Um, because does it make sense to take a fractional derivative? Yeah, actually it does. Um, I'm not going to get into that uh, right now, but in general, basically what I'm saying is we have some function here that's defined in terms of s and t. Now, the s corresponds to a derivative, but still, this is like a function of s and t, and it's equal to these two things right here. So let's just go ahead and replace all our s's with one half. And we'll just replace the dummy variable t with an n. So um, if we do that, this is what we get. We have this, negative 1 to the 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 1 half, e to the negative nx dx, is equal to this. And now in a, in a previous video, I'll try to link to it in the description, I show that the value of one-half factorial is equal to the square root of pi over two. Um, you can probably look up a proof of that online if you'd like. I'm not going to show it here, but it is true. One-half factorial is equal to the square root of pi over two. All right, so we have this equality right here. And then you can see if we take this part this part right here, and this part right here, and just divide both sides by negative 
uh, 1 raised to the 1 half power, we are left with this equality, which is exactly what we were trying to find. So now we know what this is, which means we can replace this with what we know it to be. So finally, we're almost done. We have that our integral that we were trying to find is equal to this. All we did was take what we previously knew that it was and replace this integral with what we found it to be. So this is what we have. And that simplifies nicely to this. So all in all, at the end of the day, this is what we have. We have that our original integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of x over e to the x squared plus e to the negative x squared, all squared, is equal to negative square root of 2 pi, all divided by 16, times the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over the square root of n. And I thought that was, that's kind of a neat sum right there. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.